Matthew 4, 8. Oh, how I love Jesus. Can we have the two forty eight?
Let me greet the church in the wonderful name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. My apologies for um, walking in uh, at the time that I walked in. And uh, I hope uh, you'll find it in your heart. Amen. Before we pray for God to really bless the message of the day, I just want to acknowledge that later on today is a big day for our children. Amen. And we thank God for the work of Harry Fenner and Luther Warren, who met a long time ago in a small place with a couple of other young people. And they decided that we need a program that is going to help us retain the young people in the church. They had no idea that a worldwide movement bigger than the scouts movement that I was part of is going to be established in each continent. And that hundreds and hundreds of years later, I don't know, maybe I'm exaggerating, but years later, we will have many a children who would have gone through this and they would have gotten an experience to walk with Christ. Amen. So thank God for the Pathfinder program. Amen. Amen. And we thank God for the leadership uh, of the Pathfinders uh, who have done a sterling job this year. Let's bow our heads as we pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for the opportunity to reflect on your word this morning. We thank you for your presence in our lives. We thank you for making it possible for us to come to your service this morning and commune with you and your people. Thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to worship freely on the Sabbath day. The days are numbered, Lord, when we will not have free worship as we're having it now. But whilst that door has still not yet closed, we pray that we may make full use of these opportunities and pray for each other and pray with each other and worship you in spirit and in truth. Bless us now as we're going to read your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I'm going to read from a psalm that has now uh, captured my heart. And it's a simple verse that some of you may be quite familiar with that I have gotten into, uh, into it uh, quite closely. It's Psalms 94 verse 9. Psalm 94, verse 9. When I was taught to preach, I was taught to repeat the verse twice so that until the pages are, are rather silent, and then I know the saints are there. Amen? Amen. Psalms 94, verse 9 reads as follows. In the version that I have uh, uh, taken it from, he who planted the ear Shall he not hear? He who fashioned the eye, shall he not see? Amen. More than a year ago, and I know that some of the family might be here, and I'm hoping that uh, they are strong, I visited a family that was going through something traumatic. I don't think I will, in my young life as an elder of the Seventh-day Adventist Church, have ever experienced what I experienced before um, or on that day. I went to visit a family that is very close to one of our church members. They had lost a child. And uh, some of the church members uh, that could be seated here uh, were with me when we visited that family. We walked in. And I was briefed just before we walked in. And I really didn't know what to say because I had never come across the situation. I'm trying as much as I can to keep it at a high level, but long and short of it is that the mom had lost a child who was less than two years old. And the child was abused by a man 
who was a security guard in a shopping complex, in the residential complex, and uh, proceeded to kill the child. So she's relating this to me and to those of us who were there, the pain, and I could see her eyes welling up because she's remembering the day she walked in and found the situation. I don't want to go into detail. Are you with me, Chesh? And there is no explanation because this is a security guard that is supposed to protect the innocent, the young, etc. But he did this gruesome thing to this young girl, less than two years old. And I have not been angry for a long time. But on behalf of men that are trying to live a godly life, I was very angry. I was angry because this is a misrepresentation of who we are. And this is sad for us to experience a church member, um, even though not a sentient member, but a relative of a sentient member who has gone through such pain. And as I began to talk, she cried and she said to me, I wish you could talk to my husband. He's angry. He's angry, and I don't know when he will be well. Dear Church of God, later on, it's as if God said to me, this has hurt you so deeply because um, you are also struggling with this whole situation. Let me give you a verse that will give you hope. He who planted the ear, shall he not hear? He who fashioned the eye, shall he not see? The psalmist seems to suggest here that he not only does these things or did these things, but he is the creator of everything. But he goes into detail and he says to us this morning, he planted the ear. If he planted the ear, then God can hear. He fashioned the eye, the iris, the pupil. He fashioned the eye. He took his time to fashion the eye. If the God who fashioned the eye did the wonder that he did, shall he not see? And I want to assure you this morning, dear Church of God, that God hears and God sees. I remember a time, I don't know whether I may have related to you the story. I used the Gau train to go to work. And for, for, for a change in my life that I had never experienced before, because I do hear the verse that God created, he planted the ear, and therefore he hears. And, and for the first time, I, I missed out on a conversation, uh, which I think young people call uh, FOMO. Uh, I walked into the, it, I was right inside, in fact, you know, the, the train, and, and about three boys walked in, and as they walked in, they, they started having a very lively conversation. I normally stand when, when I'm on the train, because, you know, we do a lot of sitting during the day. And as they walked in, they started to have a very lively conversation, and the conversation continued, but the FOMO within me could not withstand the conversation. I discovered that they were all deaf. And they were using hand signs to communicate. And there was a lively conversation because one of them almost fell on his back because he was laughing at what, what the other was saying. And I couldn't understand a thing. And I mean, I'm saying to myself, but guys, I would love to hear this conversation. But I could not communicate, of course, because they, they knew the language and I did not. But God hears, my dear friends. God, God hears. And, and, and he, he planted the ear and, and, and on the side of the head. He knew exactly what he was doing. And I'm amazed at the technology that is involved in the, in the ear. And, and I'm amazed at what God was trying to do. And, and, and he, he, he does this marvelous thing. And to think of the way in which we hear is a marvel 
Because these young men, as much as they were talking to each other, as much as they were conversing with each other, I could not understand them, but they could hear each other. But when God speaks, it's good that we can hear. And when God speaks even to those three young deaf people that I met on the train, it's good that they also understand. God is marvelous. Will he that planted the ear not hear? God himself is beyond the need for us to think that he cannot understand. God himself hears. God himself understands our prayers. So I, I want to say again, as I said a few weeks ago, in the midnight hour, in the wee hours of the morning, when, when your troubled soul speaks to him and you aren't able to even utter the prayer properly because of the hurt that is within you, God hears. God hears. God hears. And, and I want to give the parents the assurance who are going through a tough time as they're raising up their children, not knowing what, what the future holds. The, some of the children are going into institutions to study and in the higher institutions of learning. Some of the children uh, look, look to be wayward or seem to be wayward and, and your prayers seem not to be making any difference. I want to assure you that God hears. He planted the ear, so therefore he hears. Ellen White says in Step to Christ, page 94, What a wonder we pray so little. God is ready and willing to hear the sincere and the most humble prayer of his children, yet is much manifest reluctance on our part to make known our wants to God. He wants to hear our prayers. He is waiting with a longing heart to hear what we have to say. He knows, in fact, what you're going to say. But it matters not to him. He just wants to hear you say it. And, and the fact that he hears, to me, sometimes has done it all. If God hears, that's good enough for me. Sometimes I don't need him to answer my prayer. Sometimes I don't need him to say, what did you say? Just for me to know that God hears is a blessing to me. Amen. And this is the confidence that we have in him. That if we ask anything according to his will, then God heareth us. If we know that he hears, that's all that matters to me. But please listen to the verse that I've just made a reference to. It says, if we ask anything according to his will, Oh, let me repeat myself, but if, if I repeat myself, please forgive me. I came across a morning devotion a few years ago, and this morning devotion almost, almost took me off the Christian path because I could not believe that this is actually what the writer of this devotion is saying. He says in this devotion, God does not want us to do his will. He wants us to be his will. And I said, Lord, I thought I was getting there. But when, when you're now taking it a, a step further and a step higher and you say, you don't want us to do the will, but you want us to be the will. And I'm remembering now as I'm standing here, but there was a man called Job. And God said to Satan, eh -eh, have you seen my servant Job? He does not do my will. He is my will. And 37 chapters later, we discover that God indeed has blessed this man. Will he that planted the ear not hear? Seventh-day Adventist, God hears. My dear, beloved Christians, God hears. God hears your prayer. It does not matter how young you are. God hears your prayer. God hears your prayer. It's amazing. How we hear, and I, I was so captured by this verse, I, I thought, let me just find out and, and, and understand how we hear. And, and, and the writer says, uh, explaining how we hear, he says, sound travels uh, into the ear canal until they reach the eardrum, and the eardrum passes the vibrations through the middle ear bones or the ossicles into the inner ear. The inner ear is shaped like a snail and is called the cochlea. Inside the cochlea, there are thousands of tiny hair cells. Hair cells change the vibrations into electrical 
electrical signals that are uh, able to connect through to the brain and, and to the hearing nerve and, 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 and all of that happens and we for the first time hear sound. So, so with all this technology that I've explained to you, will he that planted the ear not hear? It's amazing how we hear. And I, and I think those who, who came up with the telephone and, 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 the, and the cellular phone were able to, to understand this technology in terms of how we get to, to hear. But, but I want to assure you this morning that he who planted the ear hears. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Just pray to him. Take time to pray to him. Take time to pray to him. And he will show you that he's a God that does hear. Oh, my dear friends, I want to understand this God much more. And it is my duty and yours just to speak to him a little bit more. It is my duty and yours just, just to talk to him a little bit more. And there's a chapter that is loved by, by one of us seated here, which I've gotten to look at a bit closer as well. Oh, Lord, our Lord, how excellent is your name in all the earth. Who have set your glory above the heavens? Out of the mouth of babes and nursing infants, you have ordained strength. And then, and then the writer continues to go on and explains to us and, and, and says to us, when I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have ordained, oh, what is man? That you are mindful of him. The son of man that you visit him. For you've made him a little lower than the angels and you've crowned him with glory and honor. And, and the Bible continues to explain throughout this. And, 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 and when I get excited, I look at the, at, I think it's verse number four from, from chapter eight. That says, what is man that you are mindful of him? What, what's, what makes you so excited about us knowing who we are and how how low we can go. But, but still, you hear us. And you are saying to us, if, if only we could pray a little bit more. You, are, you have a longing heart that is wishing to hear the most humble prayer of your children. God hears. God hears. And I'm so glad to hear that my God hears. Will he that fashioned the eye not see? Oh, my dear friends, let me make a confession. It's a good one. So don't, don't you know, don't be apprehensive. Not too long from, from today, I'll be 20 years in marriage. Amen? Amen. And, and one of the things that attracted me to that woman that I'm married to, is her eyes. Hey, I, I grew up with big eyes. She doesn't have big eyes, but her eyes. So, so we, we were told as young men when we were looking for wives that, uh, you know, pray, Brother Solombella, and close your eyes. But have one eye open, man, you know, because you, you can't really not see when you pray. You must pray for what you have seen and uh, get an assurance from the Lord. So I prayed and I said, Lord, the eyes, <laughs> the eyes, the eyes. 20 years later, captivated by the eyes. But, but there is a God who fashioned those eyes. And, and, and the writer says, if he fashioned the eye, will he not see? So, so you may sing, nobody knows the trouble I've seen. Nobody knows. You, you may say that, but there's a God who sees. He sees your trials. He sees your difficulties. He sees your illnesses. He sees your tears. And in fact, the writer says, that is a language that God understands. 
He's seen all of that. He, he has seen your recent uh, difficulties. He, he has seen uh, the, the difficulties you're going, to, you're going to encounter in the future. In fact, he sees. I shared with some people last week the reason why he sees. It is because he, he, he's everlasting. There was never a time when he wasn't. There is never a time when he isn't. There will never be a time when he won't. He is there. He has been there. So he sees, will he who fashioned the eye not see? My uncle shared with me a few years ago that, you know, your, your grandfather was an amazing man. But there was a time when your grandfather lost his sight and he would sit in a village and uh, my uncle would be next to him and uh, my grandfather, uh, my uncle would, would start laughing and, and, and make comments on what he was seeing. But my grandfather had lost sight. And, and when that happened, my uncle says, my grandfather used to ask, what is happening now? And, and I think he was missing out on an opportunity to see. And he would say, oh, how difficult it is not to see. Oh, I have learned in my young life that the eye is a very fragile member of the body. I'm looking at some of you and you're looking at me through some assistance of, 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 you know, of some sort. But, but some of us are blessed to have still, for now at least, uh, this, the, the, the ability to be able to see from afar. But I don't take seeing lightly. I have seen people. And in fact, I've got a friend whose, whose ability to see and, and, and all that technology in the eye that makes us see is beginning to degenerate. And he says to me, you know, the, the other day I went to play uh, uh, soccer with my young boy. And, and so, so I kicked the ball and, 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 uh, and I was waiting for him to kick. So I said, son, have you kicked the ball? He says, dad, I've done so. He says, I realize I'm not going to see very soon. Because my retina and everything else, all, all that technology inside the eye is beginning to degenerate. And he says, I'm appreciating every moment that I can see because I know soon I will not see. But he who fashioned the eye sees. He sees your joys. He sees your sorrows. He sees everything that is happening in you. So I'm curious because now it's the ear and God hears. And now it's the eye, and God sees. So I'm trying to find out, but, but how do we see? And, and it says, light passes through the cornea. The clear dome-shaped surface that covers the front of the eye. The cornea bends and refracts this, infract, this incoming light. The iris regulates the size of the pupil, the opening that controls the amount of light that enters the eye. Behind the pupil is the lens, a clear part of the eye that further focuses the light and image into the retina. The retina converts light into electrical signals. These electrical signals are processed further, and they travel from the retina of the eye to the brain through the optic nerve and the bundle of about one million nerve fibers. With all that, then we can see. But he who fashioned that, he can see. Oh, praise the Lord. So when I said, excuse me, as I mentioned earlier on, will he who fashioned the eye not see? I guarantee you that God sees. When we cry, God sees. When we're looking for the job, God sees. When we're going through marital troubles, God sees. When we experience rejection, God sees. When we go through all of this, God sees. And through the Lordship of Jesus Christ, I appreciate that he himself even cried. Remember when he heard that Lazarus was dead and he came to his graves to his gravesite. I want to say to you, whatever your struggle is, God sees. He sees your tears and he understands. I'm going to borrow the word that I borrowed a few sermons ago from the Old Testament. God sees. 
The Hebrew word I borrowed a few sermons ago was Raha. God sees. This word means to see. This word means to look. This word means to observe. The same words to look and observe at providing for. The same word means to observe with interest and sympathy. The same word means to take a long view of. The same word to explain that God sees is to perceive in order to understand. The same word means to take a long view of in order to perceive and then understand with a purpose to care for. God sees. Have you ever spoken to someone next to you or in front of you and you're trying to convince them? And after a long conversation, they say to you, I see. And you're thinking, we're looking at each other. But when he says, I see, it means I have taken a long view of. And now I have a deeper understanding. So God sees in that fashion. He does not only see with the eye, but he sees. And then he sees to it. You didn't get that. God sees. And then he sees to it. So in other words, he sees. And then he takes care of it. But please note, he will take care of it according to his will. Let me repeat myself. There are things that God will not answer according to our prayers. And the reason is simple. Ellen G. White says, he wants you and I to master difficulty. Amen, church? This is a tough one. I will not answer you according to your will. I will answer you according to my will. It may not be the same as your will. The reason is I want you to learn to master difficulty. I want you when you walk into the portals of glory, I want you when you walk and see the waveless sea, and you see the beauty of heaven. And when they say, excuse me, and when they say, who are these? Who are these? And, 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 and there is an answer I know in the Bible that says these are they. They've washed their robes, yes, in the, in, in the blood of the Lamb. But, but in addition to that, they learned to master difficult. When God did not answer them, but they knew that he hears and they knew that he sees. They were happy and content with that. And they learned to master difficulty. And so there are things that God will not answer. Oh, but one day, God will wipe away all tears from our eyes. And there'll be no sorrow, no sadness, because all things would have passed away. But for now, with those eyes that God has created, we will cry. For now, it is going to be difficult. For now, it's going to be tough. I love the story as I'm going to start winding up, of a man who was traveling from one country to another. This man was traveling and I think he was so full of himself, knowing very well that he was a famous guy. Now, at the risk of not knowing, because I think some of you may have been born in heaven, so you may not know a man by the name of Telisa Valas. So it does not matter uh, because uh, if the preacher knows, then it's okay. 
itself. So Telisa Valas was at the height of his acting career and he was traveling to Greece. And he got onto a plane, uh, I would presume it was business class, flying to Greece and he had just made sure that he sends a message around that no one must bother him. So Telly gets onto the plane, excuse me. And when he gets there, he sits and he opens his newspapers, trying to divert any attention towards him. And Telly continues reading the newspaper, but there was a man seated next to him who seemed to be wanting to disturb him. So this man kept trying to look, you know, if there's any opportunity to talk to, to Sally, to Telly. And Telly did not respond. He kept on using his newspaper. And I can see some of you who do take flights, who avoid conversations, because, uh, you know, you're just not a talker. A talker. And, and Telly was doing, doing the same thing. And after a while, the story says that Telly decides that I've had enough, so I'm just now going to really cover and not even leave a portion for this man to look. It seemed to have done uh, a good job, you know, his plan. And Telly realizes that the flight is about to land in Athens, Greece. And the pilot announces, ladies and gentlemen, we've got a special guest on our flight today. And Telly turns red because he's thinking, I thought I had sent a message that I must not be announced because I'm a famous actor. And the story says that as soon as that was said, everybody was anticipating who that could be. And Telly was waiting, very anxious now that he's going to get all this attention. And the announcer said, I'm glad to announce that the king of Greece is on board. And dear friends, as soon as that was said, there was commotion around him and he put down his newspapers and he realized that next to him was the king. Does, does it not happen that we wake up early in the morning in our rush to go to work, the king is next to us, but we do not have time to talk to him. Does it not happen that the king may be seated there waiting for you and I just to say good morning to the Lord and Savior. And we have no time to talk to him. And when he was interviewed on CNN, he said the most regretful moment in his entire career is that he sat next to the king and he didn't utter a word. And I want to say to you this morning, dear Adventist, every time you wake up in the morning, talk to the king. Every time you sleep in the evening, talk to the king. And as one preacher said to us many years ago, that the first thing you ought to do when you wake up is to talk to the king. The last thing in your mind before you retire for the day is to talk to the king. Will he that fashioned the eye not see? Will he that planted the ear, not hear. And God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was good, Genesis 1.31. And God saw the wickedness of man was great on earth, and that every imagination and thought of his heart was only evil continuously, Genesis 6, verse 5. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord, Genesis 6, verse 8. And she called the name of the Lord who spoke to her and heard her, Thou God seest. For he said, Have I also have seen him that seest me. Genesis 16, 13. God sees. God hears Zechariah 10, verse 6. And I will strengthen the house of Judah, and I will save the house of Joseph. For I am the Lord their God, and will hear them. Psalms 4 verse 3, but they know that the Lord had set apart him who is godly himself. The Lord will hear when I call unto him. 
Psalm 54, verse 2. Hear my prayer, O God. Give ear to the words of my mouth. Psalms 116, verse 1. I love the Lord because he heard my voice and succumbed to my supplication. Genesis 3, verse 7. And I, the Lord, said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people who are in Egypt and have heard their cry by reason in the, uh, because of their masters, for I know their sorrows. God sees and God hears. Will he that planted the ear not hear? Will he that fashioned the eye not see? I don't know what you're going through this morning. But as my friend Brian is going to be playing, I want to make an appeal once more. We're nearing the year 2018. It's been a tough year. Some of you may not have stood when the opportunity for prayer garden took place. But I want you, as you think about what God has done in your life, if you could stand up with me and thank him. And even further, if you've got a request that says, Lord, th there were times that I thought you, you, you did not hear. And I want to say today, I declare that maybe I may not have understood you, but you do hear. And I may, I may somehow have believed that you do not see, but I want to say to you, I thank you that you see. God hears and God sees. If it is your prayer this morning, that God may increase your faith. I pray that you stand with me. Hallelujah. I don't know if someone here says, Lord, I, I, I still have maybe a need for us to pray that I may hear and that I might see that you see. If you could come forward this hour. There are things that you are praying for and it seems like God is not hearing and God is not seeing. I want to invite you to come forward. And we have a special prayer. Is there anyone such this morning? Thank you, my brother. God bless you. God hears and God sees. Is there anyone else who says, Lord, please hear and please see, but not according to my will, according to your will. We thank the Lord, the Savior, who still sees, who still hears. I don't know what you are facing, but I just want to say to you, God hears. God hears. God sees. And he will see to it. He sees. And he will see to it. There could be family issues. Could be work issues. Could be spiritual issues we're struggling with. It's been years. It's been months. It's been days. Could be relationship issues within or without the church of God, God hears and God sees. May God bless you. Shall we pray? Father, this morning, we want to thank you for the wonderful words found in this psalm that God sees. Thank you for seeing that God hears. Thank you for hearing. Here are your children, dear Lord. See your children. Hear their prayers. You are a mighty God, the creator of heaven and earth. All things are in your hands. All things are created by you and for you. You are above all things and through you all things consist. We have no doubt that this morning as you are praying, your children have got prayers in their hearts. They have been uttering them for a while to you, praying that you may heal them, praying that you may hear their needs, praying that you may hear their cries, praying that you, their prayers may be heard by you according to your will, praying that there could be a change in their spiritual lives, praying that there could be a change on those that they love who have not accepted Jesus Christ yet, praying that the struggles that they are having in order to have a better life and a better loving relationship with you, that you may remove those. I pray, Lord, that you may purge them with hyssop, that you may wash them with your blood. I pray, dear Lord, that you may lift your children up and out of the difficult situations. 
not according to their will, but according to your will. Dear Lord, help us to align ourselves with your will. The time is coming soon, Lord, when we will not pray and worship you in this comfort. But whilst that time has not come yet, please help us to master difficulty and hear our pleadings to you. Lord, you have seen the trouble of each and every person who is standing this morning and those that are seated. Lord, I pray that you see to it. You see to uh, whatever their challenge is, that you see to their troubles, you see to their sorrows, you see to their children who may be near or afar. We, you see to their needs, you see to their parents who might be in this country or away from this country, in our neighboring countries. You see to each and everything, for we do not, we do not have the ability to take care of everything in life, but we trust you and we lay everything on you and we know that you see. Thank you for seeing. Thank you for hearing. Thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you.